How's it going guys? So today's video, at least for me, is really excited because it's one of my favorite tools in Blender and they just gave a massive update to it in Blender 2.9. So let's go check it out. Before we get into that, I do want to shout out, I just released a new exclusive tutorial on the Patreon on how to get this really cool refracting glass effect. I focused on the lighting setup for this, so it's a really fun lighting tutorial, and I also give you the material to get this really cool refraction glass. If you don't know about the Patreon, on all three tiers, you get 10 procedural materials a month. A lot of cool stuff going on there. You also get several exclusive tutorials a month, as well as project files from a lot of my studies and projects. You get a couple of those a month as well, along with on tier three, I show you my client work in the process and some really cool stuff happening there this month so if you want to check all that out that's in the description let's get on with the rest of this tutorial all right so what i'm going to show you today is only in blender 2.9 i'll leave the link in the description to get that but it is the new sky texture so if, just to show you how to actually get it working i'll just put a primitive in here and make sure you are in the cycles engine it only works for cycles you'll click the little um the little world icon on color go to sky texture and it will be now available. So what I'm going to do is show you the new features here in 2.9. So I'm just going to show you this is a quick little scene that I mocked up here. You guys can purchase this scene for a dollar if you'd like. Um, but here is so I'm going to show you some of the really cool features in here. So here they are. Here's actually the uh, texture itself, the sky texture. We have the sun way up there. So let's just go ahead and start working with some of these things. So first we have the sun size. So I'll show you the value in being able to change your sun size. So we'll go with a really small one, something like this. Um, in different parts of the world, you will see a sun that's that size. The thing is, so see how this is a very hard edged shadow. Well, what if I don't want that? Well, I, what I can do is bring up my sun size to a pretty considerable amount. We'll give it like 20. And then as you can see, this this shadow is greatly um, smoothed out and that can actually make really really nice effects for a sun i'm going to keep it at around 10 just kind of a happy medium there so sun elevation so there's the sun sun elevation just you know brings it up say if i want to bring it down on my scene how it really does a nice effect and hits my um object here and then you can bring your sun elevation even lower and then you can get a more of a sunset look and then what you can do is if you want to really achieve a sunset look you bring this air slider right here and um, that'll give you a crazy orange sometimes you know it'll be too much so you should be um, light with it but now we have a good sunset um, here and as you can see as you can see a really valuable thing about this is this gradient right here that's kind of a big deal it really sells a realistic looking sun um, and then obviously we have strength right down here. I just keep it at one. It's pretty powerful by default. Uh, I'm gonna bring my air back over here and then I'll bring my sun elevation back up. I'm not even sure where I put them. You can see really nice color too. On the uh, on the 2.8 sun, you'd have color, but once you brought the sun to a certain elevation, it would just um, glitch out and it was not that good. But we can bring that, see, you can have this nice sun and it, it almost looks physically correct and it's really really nice obviously now we have sun rotation which is really cool totally animatable too so i can bring the sun rotation um, back over here super uh super pixelated obviously trying to render here but now we have this sun rotation just playing around with our scene and as you can see it bringing it around giving different sun now the sun is directly in front of what i'm doing here and i'm going to bring it over there and now we have some really fun stuff going on. So you can really go crazy with this sun. So I'm gonna give it like 200, bring it over, maybe 150, get a nice sun going on here, get the shadow right there. So this sun can animate 360 around and actually you can make a perfectly seamless loop with that if you can just do, I've already done that with this, just a really fun animation going in a 360. You have dust, if we, you can actually look at the sun, you can see how the dust will affect um, your scene. So if you bring your dust all the way down, you get a little more blue action. It's a little clearer of a sun, but if you bring that dust up, it does add some haze um, in terms of how the sun shines on things. Then you have your ozone. I like the ozone at 10. If you bring the ozone back to zero, you get a more brown look. So if we look at the sun to see what the ozone does, so ozone is at zero and then ozone at one. I'm a more fan of the blue sky, so I bring my ozone at 10. So, and then obviously we have the strength. Right here, if you if it's not working for you, you need to be in the Natasha 
Um, you have these two. This is the ones that we're used to in Blender 2.8. Natasha is the new crazy, awesome, almost completely physically correct thing. And you almost don't need a you know external HDRI like from HDRI Haven, which I use all the time. This is crazy and it's super cool and it's one of my favorite new features that they rolled out. I'm a huge fan of it. And yeah, you can play with it and make plenty of things. You can download this scene file here in the description if you'd like. Everybody on Patreon, you'll be getting that for free. Uh, thank you guys for watching and I hope you learned something.